Hey everyone, do you have a newborn that will only sleep when being held and potentially resist being put down? I get that. That's what we're going to talk about today. Hey there, everyone. I'm Dr. Sarah Mitchell. I'm a chiropractor by training, but really found my passion in empowering other parents to teach their little ones to sleep as a sleep and parenting expert at helping babies sleep. So I hear frequently from parents who only have babies that will sleep in their arms. They refuse to be put down or um, experience that transfer. Okay, so let's talk about this. First of all, let's talk about the difference between a newborn and a baby, because there's completely different reasonings that might be going on here. So first, we're going to talk about newborn. So why would a newborn only sleep on someone and refuse to be put down? Well, there's a four different things that might be going on here. The first one is that person, that little person is really uncomfortable. And so he or she is seeking the added comfort of being next to you. And then you really have to be a troubleshooter and a detective to dive in as to why your little one might be uncomfortable. What could be causing that? Some things can be undiagnosed reflux or reflux just in general. And what is reflux? Basically, it's heartburn. The acid from their stomach is splashing up into their esophagus, so they are uncomfortable. Okay, so reflux could be one of the reasons they refuse to be put down. There are reflux exists on a continuum. We have other videos talking more about that, but it's, it's basically back, backsplash of that acid and it can exist on a continuum. It could be really bad and they could be spinning up and you can see them arching at the, at the bottle of the breast and not wanting to eat, or it could be very slight and not that visible and they might not be spitting it out. It might be coming up burning, they smack, grimace because it burned and then they swallow it back down and then they grimace again. That's silent reflux. Okay. So those are some things that you might be watching for. Another reason a kiddo might want to seek comfort and sleep on you is because they have gas. And how is gas happening? Well, again, could be a few factors. The first thing you always want to check is your latch to the bottle or the breast, because if your kiddo is getting any air in, that can cause gas and that can cause discomfort. And that often shows up waking up every hour after 1 a.m. being very uncomfortable. Okay, so gas. Some gas can be due to food sensitivities. So foods that are higher in sugar, higher in fiber, higher in protein, just harder to digest can be make them more gassy and uncomfortable. And lastly, the, the need to burp. So if you're not doing a great job burping and getting the, the air bubbles out, then your child can be more uncomfortable. So those are a few reasons why your child might be uncomfortable and seek sleeping on you for extra comfort. Okay. Another reason might be that your kiddo is just completely exhausted. Okay. So newborns should come with a little, a little note on them expires after about one hour because most kids will become harder to get them to fall asleep after about one hour. And then they want to seek comfort again. They're more tired. They want to be on you. But I will say the main reason is uncomfortable. There's something you haven't picked up on yet with the reflux, the gas, um, the digestive issues that is causing them to seek comfort into you. Okay. Now, a lot of parents report that they're, they can get their kiddos to fall asleep, but then they just can't do the transfer. And why is that? Again, it could be seeking comfort, but there's a couple other little things. One is, are you transferring in a way that does not elicit that startle reflex or the moral reflex, okay? If you're putting them down head first, that will elicit that arms out startle response. So you wanna be putting them down feet, then bum, and then head, that can help. The other thing is um, the timing of sleep. So trying to get them down in the appropriate window. So for a newborn less than two months, most kids can comfortably stay awake after about an hour. And often that's like feeding, burping, and then the hour has passed for some people, especially early on, okay? Keeping your kid up to two hours, it'll be harder to get them to fall asleep and stay asleep. They're much more sensitive. They may wake up on transfer. The other reason kiddos wake up on transfer is that your sleep cycles change from a newborn stage to a baby stage somewhere around three months. In the newborn stage, most kids don't have light sleep, that kind of light sleep feeling when they're kind of awake and they can hear things around them. They go from awake to deep sleep or REM sleep. But around three months, that starts to change. Now they're in light sleep. And now when you used to be putting them down, they were in deep sleep. Now they're in light sleep and they sense that change. Their caveman brain says, hey, danger, danger, you're changing positions, and it wakes them up. Okay. That's why sleep cycles change. Now, if we're getting into the older ages, the other reason why a lot of kids resist um, being put down is preference and habit. Okay, Inadvertently, we are teaching what our kids 
teaching our kids what sleep looks like in the four to eight week period. I know it's so early, right? You're not really thinking about that. A lot of you may be struggling with feeding or weight gain issues, not really thinking about that, right? But this is the one of the subtitles on my book, The Helping Baby Sleep Method, which is the art and science of teaching your baby to sleep. The circle says why drowsy but awake might be setting you up to fail, right? And here's why, because you know, you can get them drowsy and then you put them down in the newborn stage, they keep sleeping. Around three months, they start to wake up and they resist that transfer. And now what happens is you end up putting them down dead asleep. Now that's all fine until you kind of understand that sleep is a learned habit. So if you're teaching your kiddo to fall asleep on you, as they get older, they still associate sleep with falling asleep on you or being on you. And then when you try and transfer them, they resist that change because either they associate you with sleep or even if they have a preference of sleeping on you right? That's the older kid. So when I have someone who says my nine month old falls asleep on me and then I rock her to sleep or feed her to sleep or whatever. And then I go to put her down and she wakes up right away. Well, they're at those ages, it's often preference at play. Okay. Preference. I would much rather prefer to sleep on you because it's warm and cozy and gosh darn it. I like you so much rather than sleep by myself in the crib. Right. And how do you make those changes? Well, that's a really big question, right? Because that's actually teaching your baby to sleep. How do I change the way my child has learned to fall asleep? Because sleep is a learned habit. Right? you think about yourself, you find your favorite position, you close your eyes, you drift off into sleep. But if I said to you tonight, you can't sleep in that position and I'm going to take away your pillow, that would be very uncomfortable for you. You would toss and turn, but you would learn a new way to fall asleep because it's a learned habit. And the thing is in, in these younger stages, we just often don't believe that our children are even capable of these things. And when they're uncomfortable, they express that with tears, which can be completely unnerving, right? And I'm talking four months and later. In the newborn stage, absolutely, they don't have the capacity to learn that new thing. We're, we're gently helping them and doing gentle newborn sleep shaping, which you can absolutely do between the four and eight week stages. That's everything we teach in the helping newborns sleep as part of the book and our, our online classes. Okay. So let's do a quick summary here for those of you who have newborns, who have kiddos that won't sleep unless they're being held, okay? Are they uncomfortable? Are you doing a good job burping? Do they have any kind of undiagnosed reflux? Are you nailing the timing of sleep and not making it too early or too late, right? For kiddos older than that, is this now a learned habit? And they associate sleep with falling asleep on you. And can you try and get them down earlier or help make them drowsy with the calm but awake method? in the crib rather than on you, essentially. But in that early newborn stage, you know, less than three months, those five weeks, six weeks, there's usually something else going on that we haven't addressed yet. And I want you to be a really good detective and a troubleshooter by trying to think about those things. And if you're looking for more help with that, that's what we teach in the book, The Helping Baby Sleep Method, The Art and Science of Teaching Your Baby to Sleep, which is on Amazon to help you figure out what else you might be missing and become a really good sleep detective. Thanks for being here. And if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget, don't forget to hit subscribe to never miss a baby sleep trip.